Tentacles that have broken off or are drying on the beach can still sting for months. There are over 200 different kinds of jellyfish in the ocean, and they are amazingly graceful swimmers. By repeatedly contracting and relaxing the muscles under their bells, they swim with elegance or serenely float along. The famous Portuguese man of war is another cnidarian, stinging creature, but technically not a real jellyfish, but a colony of several interdependent creatures, each of which could survive on its own if it were separated from the others. But they work together in a colony and reproduce as a colony. Because of its sail, early mariners thought the creature looked like a Portuguese man of war ship. The man of war is kind of like a hot air balloon. It can deflate its sail and sink below the surface in storms. Otherwise, it largely goes wherever the wind blows, in groups of a thousand or more. The man of war delivers a highly toxic sting, which is extremely painful, but very seldom fatal. The sea wasp, on the other hand, is considered by many as the most venomous marine animal known. Found in warmer waters, the pain from the sting is excruciating. Shock, breathing paralysis, and death can fall within as little as two to three minutes. Sea anemones look something like a stationary jellyfish. In fact, anemones are often called the upside-down jellyfish. The actual class name for the anemone is the flower animal. The sea anemone might look like a harmless flower, but it is a meat-eating predator, stinging fish with poisonous tentacles and pushing the prey into its mouth. About 50 different fish are immune to their venom, and they live safely among the deadly tentacles, the clownfish being the famous example. Certain crabs will actually carry anemones in their claws as weapons. When threatened, they'll shove the anemone in their attacker's face to ward them off. Coral is an animal living inside the surrounding limestone shell. The coral are tiny cylindrical animals with tentacles. A new coral will move into the neighborhood, cement itself to other corals, and form a shell for protection. Eventually, you have an entire coral reef made of millions of living and dead coral. Coral thrive in clean, shallow, sunlit water and house some of the most colorful and venomous fish in the ocean, like the utterly fearless lionfish, covered with beautiful hypodermic needles containing a lethal venom. Incidentally, there is a difference between poisonous and venomous. Poison is eaten or absorbed. Venom is injected by fangs, stinging cells, or spines, just in case you were wondering. Sponges are filter-feeding animals, soaking up water and nutrients through millions of pores, like the pores in your skin. They're called porifera, meaning with pores. Of the 6,000 different species of sponges, only six are sold as sponges. Their stretchy, water-absorbing qualities make them ideal for bath sponges. The natural sponge you buy in the store is actually the skeleton of one of these creatures, a skeleton that becomes unusually soft and elastic when wet. You can cut a living sponge into several pieces, and each piece will grow a new sponge. Some sponges are actually toxic to your skin, causing a burning sensation for several hours. Needless to say, these are not the variety sold as your average bath sponge. Sea stars, commonly called starfish. Look at the skin on this sea star. Tough and a little prickly. That's why this phylum of aquatics are called the echinoderm. It means prickly skin. Starfish are in the phylum echinoderm, prickly skin, and in the class Asteroidea, just like the word asteroid, which means like a star. See? Asteroids are like a star, and starfish are like a star. Asteroidea. Sea stars are also carnivorous predators. They are especially fond of clams and oysters, eating a dozen or more daily. They straddle the shell and slowly pry the shells apart, the process can take hours. If the starfish is successful and the clam opens up even as little as one two hundredth of an inch, the diameter of a blood cell, the starfish's stomach will sneak through, attach to the clam, 
and digest it. Sea stars usually have five regenerating arms or rays, though some have 20 or more. If one gets cut off, it will regrow a new one. They have powerful gripping tubes on their arms, a mouth opening, digestive glands located in their arms, where else, and an opening for waste. Sea stars do not have a central brain. Rather, they have a ring of nerve cells that move information around the body. They even have light-sensitive eye spots at the end of each arm, allowing them to seek or shun light. It's fairly common to find the skeleton of a sand dollar on the beach. Living sand dollars are covered with little cilia hairs that move bits of food into the sand dollar's mouth right in the center. They like to live in the area just below low tide and nestle into the sand. When they die, their skeletons wash up on shore. The little things that rattle inside are tiny bones that made up part of the sand dollar's mouth. Sea urchins definitely have prickly skin, more echinoderms. They look like a spiky tennis ball with a flat bottom. They slowly move around the ocean floor in the evening, seeking small sea animals and plants, mostly algae and seaweed, and are a major player in controlling seaweed growth. Sea urchins scrape algae off of rocks using a powerful scraping jaw that looks a little bit like a lantern. At least, that's what Aristotle thought 2,000 years ago when he wrote about sea urchins. Maybe you can see the similarity. This kind of chewing equipment has been called Aristotle's lantern ever since. Crabs, snails, and otters will all eat sea urchins. They snip down the little spines until they can get down to the food. This is the delicate skeleton of a sea urchin. Trillions of marine creatures were at some point in the past completely wiped out by a worldwide catastrophe. We know this because we have the hardened imprints of their buried and often twisted remains still with us. We examine these sketchy imprints and then give the animals a name. Trilobites, Elasmosaurus, Ichthyosaurus, Dinichthys, Orthocanthus, the huge megalodon, Plesiosaurus, Chronosaurus. All these and more are thought to be extinct, but every now and then one of these supposedly extinct animals actually shows up, like the supposedly extinct coelacanth, a so-called prehistoric fish that died with the dinosaurs until it was found that Madagascar fishermen have been catching and eating them for centuries. Is it possible that there are more supposedly extinct creatures awaiting rediscovery? God made so many different kinds of creatures. The list is virtually endless, and we've said nothing of so many different aquatic kinds. Moss animals, wheel animals, horseshoe crabs, sea spiders, sea cucumbers, sea squirts, and many, many more, some of which are known only to scientists and have never even been given common names. What else might be out there? The world's oceans cover more than two-thirds of the entire planet. The average depth is more than twice that of the Grand Canyon. At the deepest known point, Mount Everest would be completely submerged with a mile of water still on top. The ocean is big and deep. Marine biologist Dr. Clyde Roper said scientists have been using submersibles to scan the ocean for over 50 years. And in all that time, they've actually observed less than 50 square miles of the entire ocean floor. And the oceans cover 140 million square miles. There are thousands of creatures in the ocean that no one has ever seen, and probably many creatures hiding somewhere in those depths that people haven't seen for a long, long time. But God sees them all and knows them all, because like a master architect, he designed and crafted each one of them uniquely different, and all on the fifth day.